four women in college, in the same car, driving back to Southern Utah University, choose a shortcut near the state line, which leads them into a highway space warp. One wrong turn at a fork in the road on Highway 56 that soon would threaten their very lives. Maria, Crystal, Johnny, and Abby. Together, they took a day trip to Nevada to see the rodeo in Pioche. Johnny was driving her father's painstakingly restored Chevrolet. It was nighttime when they returned on Highway 56. It was getting late. After crossing the railroad tracks in Medina, they came to a fork in the road, and no one remembered which of the roads they had come in on. All the roads out here looked the same, flanked by the same fields of endless sagebrush. The blacktop road that headed east must be the right one, they all agreed. They were now driving toward Gadianton Canyon. They drove for a long time, the road changed from black asphalt to white concrete, and Maria suggested it might be time to turn around. But they were already at the end of the road. Johnny had to stop the car, because the only thing in front of them now was a huge landslide of Red Canyon rock. So they turned around and drove back. But the open country around them was not the same. Instead of a desert, they saw fields of wheat. The sagebrush was gone, replaced by grain fields, rippling in waves under the full moon. A full moon that was not supposed to be there at this time of year. They were lost, incredibly lost. With great relief, Ahead, on the road, they saw the glow of civilization. The street lights of a small town. They came to a diner on the edge of town. Johnny immediately pulled over into the parking lot. Crystal said she could smell hamburgers. The diner had one of those neon signs, which hummed and occasionally spit. But the neon sign was not in English. Its letters did not look like that of any known alphabet. As the girls pulled in, some patrons were coming out of the burger joint. They were laughing and arguing with each other. One of them turned around and pointed at the Chevy. Abby's window was already open so she leaned out to get directions. She tasted the cool night air. And then, abruptly, she leaned back and rolled up her window fast. Let's go, she breathed. Crystal was also on the passenger side. And she began to scream. Johnny put all her weight on the gas pedal. In slow motion, the Chevrolet spun around, spraying gravel against the glass windows of the diner. Suddenly, they were headed back the way they came. The streetlights receded behind them. Johnny said, I saw them too. And then Crystal said, they weren't human. Maria was looking out the back window. We're being followed, she said. Johnny could see them too, in the rearview mirror. Two vehicles were coming after them. Then Johnny could clearly see. 
these vehicles were not from the Earth she knew. They were egg-shaped. Their headlights were intensely bright. Their engine noise was high-pitched, like a nest of mad hornets. According to the speedometer, Johnny was now driving over 80 miles an hour, and the others begged her to slow down. That is when the road itself gave out. The Chevy flew into the darkness, kicking up a huge cloud of red dust in its wake. Now she had to slow down as the car bucked over the sand, tearing into the sagebrush. She had almost succeeded in getting it under control when the car fell headlong into a dry stream bed. The car got stuck at the bottom of the arroyo. The motor stalled out and refused to start. Although bruised and scared witless, none of the girls was seriously injured. It seemed like a lifetime before daylight came. They abandoned the car and struck out on foot, heading west through the desert. They walked for miles before reaching Highway 56. But it wasn't 20 minutes before they flagged down the Utah Highway Patrol. It was Maria who first approached the patrolman, then returned to the group to report that the officer really was a human being. The Chevy was recovered three miles east of the main highway, with no tire tracks behind it, as if it had just materialized out of thin air. There is no fork in Highway 56, and no trace of where the girls left the main road was ever found. These women believe they drove into a different world. A world where Utah had never become a desert. A world that suffered fewer meteor strikes and fewer extinction events than our own planet. Where the dinosaurs never died out. Instead, they evolved. <laughs> I have seen some of the experiments shown in this film actually carried out